wagon comes sweeping down the plain. Lynn Riggs was an author, poet, screenwriter, and playwright, perhaps best known for creating Green Grow the Lilacs, upon which the film Oklahoma was based. So how to move beyond thinking of Lynn Riggs just as the guy who wrote the thing Oklahoma was based on. I think, first off, we have to start reading his plays more. And we have to understand him as this incredibly prolific, highly respected, innovative thinker, dramatist, uh, who had a roughly 30-year career um, and worked with some of the most central figures, not just in American drama, but also in Hollywood and also modernist uh, aesthetics and modernist thought. Lynn Riggs uh, went to school here in Claremore. I was just another Cherokee kid. He grew up really loving the theater, uh, music, and then it grew into poetry. He, he went to school at OU and really took on a lot of that playwriting then and there. No doubt, uh, growing up as a gay man who is attuned to things like poetry and the theater um, was hard to, to live through. Uh, and, and that's one of the reasons why when Riggs left Oklahoma, he only came back sporadically. Um, he lived the rest of his life in Hollywood and, and New York and, and Mexico and Santa Fe. He worked extensively in Hollywood and had a lot of Hollywood friends. I mean, this guy ran with Betty Davis, Clark Gable, a Joan Crawford. For Riggs, Hollywood was always this place where he made money so that then he could fund his theatrical pursuits. Because he hated the spectacle of Broadway, he really loathed the spectacle and superficiality of Hollywood, even though he had a good time when he was in Hollywood. As, a, as an artist, as an intellectual, as a screenwriter, he never felt that he was given the opportunity to write the kind of films that he was producing on stage. The closest thing we get is Oklahoma. He traveled extensively, and uh, he spent some time in Paris writing Green Grow the Lilacs. The thing that makes Riggs unique is that he's writing from and about a place that nobody else knew about and that nobody else was writing about. Being a child of this mixed race family, it really allows you to kind of dig into some of the historical and cultural complexities of Cherokee history. And he used stories from home or memories from home to recreate those people he knew growing up. Uh, really inspired him for his characters. Why don't you grab her and kiss her when she acts that way, Curly? She's just aching for you too, I bet. I won't even speak to him, let alone allow him to kiss me. The bragging, bow-legged, wished it had a sweetheart, Bob. She likes you quite a lot. A lot of people also don't know that he wrote a play called The Cherokee Night, which is based here in Claremore. Riggs long considered The Cherokee Night his most uh, important and significant contribution to American theater, um, both from a personal level, because it's, it's maybe one of the more, most personal plays that he wrote in terms of some of the central conflicts and tensions that it brings up, uh, but also in terms of bringing that alternative picture of uh, Cherokee nationhood, Oklahoma statehood, and focusing on the impacts of that on Cherokee families. He allows us, he really challenges audiences to, to come to terms with their own assumptions uh, about uh, the, what they project onto the racial dynamics of this period, um, and then also challenges us to think about what it is, for instance, to be Indian or to be Cherokee in that moment. And plus, he's giving us images of Cherokee people that are not feathers and leathers, right? That are not these romanticized Hollywood images of the Plains warrior, you know, or the vanishing Indian. Like, these are Indians that are in the present. Um, and so I think just bringing that to a Broadway audience uh, and forcing them to contend with this different picture of Oklahoma, this different picture of Indian life, this different picture of Cherokee life, is what really situates him as a, as a really unique figure in this moment. He wasn't this brooding, tortured soul that was sitting around his study thinking about what a traumatic life he led. He was the type of guy who would bring his guitar to the party and play for everyone. He definitely used his social life um, in his playwriting. One of his legacies from a Cherokee perspective is that we have a dramatic tradition. We have a national literary tradition of which he's a part, but we also have a tradition of drama, stage drama. Um, here in the Cherokee Nation, we have you know, contemporary dramatists like Mary Catherine Nagel and Delana Studi and others who are, are bringing these histories to the stage. Um, Lynn Riggs is really one of those forebears that did that you know, 60, 70 years prior and was dealing with all of the same issues uh, regarding family, community, 
all of these things that we see in contemporary native drama and, and with contemporary Cherokee playwrights, Lynn Riggs was, was wrestling with those back in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s.